Scripture Life Today. Hello, and welcome back to Scripture Life Today. Well, today we're going to continue on in our uh, study on biblical or Bible reliability. Now, last week we began looking at reasons why the Scripture is reliable. This is a topic that we need to discuss on a channel like this because of the world that we just happen to live in today. Uh, there are people who just simply um, don't trust Scripture for whatever reason that might be personal to them, how they were raised. You find a lot of times there are individuals who um, have a hard time believing in Scripture because of their misconceptions about who God is or, uh, or about Jesus Christ and even, even why, why there's a Bible to begin with. You will find, uh, depending on how much interaction you have with believers and non-believers alike, that there are just there are people like we stated last week at the beginning of our lesson, they'll they'll somehow allow themselves to believe in a virgin birth. They'll somehow allow themselves to believe in a resurrection from the dead, as we would celebrate as Christians at Easter time, um, which we, by the way, should celebrate all the time. But that's neither here nor there. But they will then they 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 just just can't bring themselves to believe in. And, G, and, and God creating in six 24-hour days. Um, they, they begin to rely more upon science and what science says rather than what the Scriptures say. Well, the funny thing about that is science doesn't um, have the ability to prove an individual can come back to life. Science um, can't prove or duplicate a virgin birth. But that's okay. We can believe that because I'm getting something out of that, my eternal salvation. But this other stuff I'm not so sure of. You know, science disproves it, whatever the case might be. So then you find yourself entering into a discussion with individuals and maybe even some individuals in your church, depending on where, you know, what type of church you attend and how knowledgeable those individuals might be. We all have these preconceived notions about what uh, the reliability of Scripture, what church is, how I was raised. So there's a, re there's a really good reason why we should have discussions on the reliability of Scripture. Last week I gave you some bullet points, which we don't have to go over those again this week. Just take the time, if you would, in case you missed part one, to go back and look at that. I want to move forward today and continue talking about the reliability of Scripture and why it's trustworthy, why we can depend on it. Um, I did mention last week, and I will say this, that we talked about outside sources and how that you can trust Scripture based upon how outside sources, archaeological, historical writings, whatever the case might be like that, that, that they give credence to and prove the Bible's reliability. So don't forget, we're talking about what argument can I offer if I'm in a discussion with someone and they want to know, is the Bible reliable? Well, these are some answers that you can um, study up on yourself and become more uh, familiar with and maybe be able to use these arguments to help bring them along in their search for whether or not Scripture can be trustworthy. Now, tonight, or, or for our lesson today, there's, a, there's another area that I want us to go in, and I want us to begin by thinking about some individuals who were outside of Scripture, but still within, uh, still within a, a time frame, a time period, that they had a huge impact on Christianity in our world today in the 21st century. Someone that I want to talk about is Martin Luther. He, of course, played a huge role. In, in, um, in Christianity, in how uh, going, believing by faith and, you know, and, wor and works doesn't get you, allow you to be saved, but it's, it's by faith. And if you know anything about the history of Martin Luther, you know that he's the one that nailed his 95 theses to the door there in Wittenberg. Um, why did Martin Luther do what he did? Well, he was a Catholic. And he began to study for himself. Imagine that. He began to search out Scripture for himself. And he began to realize that what was being taught 
didn't always line up or agree with what Scripture said. And so this is, not, this is something we in the 21st century should do as well. It doesn't matter what church I was raised in. It doesn't matter what my denomination or non-denomination was. Does what I believe line up with the sacred text? Well, this is what Martin Luther began to do. And he got to the point where he began writing down a list of ways that he saw the Catholic Church was not being true to Scripture. And ultimately, he nailed his 95 theses, as we said, to the door there in Germany. Now, if you know anything about Martin Luther and you know why he wrote the 95 theses that he did, let me just read you a little bit here from a what I pulled off the internet. From It's from gotquestions.org. In case you would like to know where I got my information, you could look this up yourself. And it says, what are the 95 theses of Martin Luther? The 95 Theses were written in 1517 by a German priest and professor of theology named Martin Luther. His revolutionary ideas served as the catalyst for the eventual breaking away from the Catholic Church and were later instrumental in forming the movement known as the Protestant Reformation. Now, if you do a study on the word Protestant, it truly, literally means protestant, as in you're protesting something. Well, Martin Luther was protesting against the Catholic teaching at that time where he saw it going away from what the text says. So Protestant, or he became a Protestant. Whether you realize that or not, that's exactly what it means. In essence, his theses called for a full reform of the Catholic Church and challenged other scholars to debate with him on matters of church policy. Can you imagine that today? Today we get angry if somebody doesn't agree with us or accept our lifestyle or our gender or whatever it might be. Here's an individual who was willing to enter into a uh, debate, you know, something that you got to use your brain with, and that's in short supply, it would seem, in our world today. But Martin Luther was one of the individuals who believed in having an honest intellectual debate surrounding Scripture. May God help us find such individuals in, as we go through our life each day. But back to the uh, printout. One of the major re- uh, issues that concerned Luther pertained to the matter of church officials selling indulgences to the people as a means of releasing them from having to exact penance for their misdeeds. Indulgences were also claimed by the church to limit the amount of time the purchaser's loved one would spend in purgatory. And so on it goes. But here's the point without me having to read this entire document. The point being that Martin Luther loved this book so much that he was willing to place his life on the line for what he believed in. And so in the 21st century, in 2022, I have to ask you, I have to ask myself, do I believe in the Bible to the point that I'm willing to stake my life on it. Do you believe in Scripture to the point that you would be willing to stake your life on it? Now, as we're having a discussion on biblical reliability, well, do you trust this enough? Would you be like a Martin Luther who was willing to place his his own life at stake because he believed that the message that was contained in Scripture needed to trump the belief system of the day. And of course, the, the, the large belief system of his day was uh, Catholicism. Now, let me get down to the last paragraph here and just let you know that Martin Luther wasn't just, um, he wasn't just out there somewhere by himself and he went unnoticed. In 1521, Pope Leo X excommunicated Luther from the Catholic Church and declared him a heretic. Why did he declare Martin Luther a heretic? Because He was going against the grain with Catholic doctrine. He wanted to declare what thus saith the Lord, if you recall from last week, uh, over 400 times, Old Testament writers, what thus saith the Lord. Martin Luther was willing to place more emphasis in what thus saith the Lord than what the Catholic doctrine taught. 
And so he was excommunicated from the Catholic Church. Luther was, all, was so despised by the church that a death warrant was issued giving anyone permission to kill him. Now, you think about that. However, Luther was given protection by Prince Frederick, uh, Frederick of Saxony, a staunch defender of Luther. Hidden in one of Frederick's castles, Luther began producing a translation of the Bible into German. Ten years later, it was completed. Ten years later, it was completed. Now, Martin Luther lived out the remainder of his life as an individual who was wanted, wanted by the Catholic Church because he had the audacity to step out and say, no, I believe in God's Word more than I do in what man says God's Word says. Something else we have to add into this discussion is, at the time, um, Scripture was not readily available like we have the ability to just pick up our phone or go to the computer and we can pull up a, any type of Bible translation that, that, we, that suits us that we want to read. That's wonderful. But think about a time when there were no Bibles readily available and the, those who were responsible for saying what was in Scripture, well, they could say anything because it, it had not been translated into the language of the common individual. That's why Luther spent uh, a great portion of time translating the Bible into a, into a, into a, a, a readable or understandable language for the common everyday man and woman that they would be able to, to then pick up a Bible for themselves. Imagine living at a time when there was no Bible to pick up and you had to rely upon someone else to say, this is what Scripture says. Well, it just so happens that in Luther's day, and not just in Luther's day, but in Luther's day, the powers that be were saying, this is what Scripture says, but it wasn't what Scripture said. Or they would deviate a little when it was uh, for their convenience, or it benefited them financially, or whatever the case might have been. So Luther was willing to step out to the point to put his life on the line so that Scripture could be understood and read by the common everyday man and woman. Now that is having such, so much reliab reliability in the text that you're willing to say, I believe in this so staunchly that I'm willing to sacrifice my life. Do you believe in Scripture like that today? Does it play a role in your life at all? Or is it just there for you to do your read through the Bible in a year, uh, you know, whatever it might be, plan? Now, that's great. But how much of the Bible do you really, truly get inside you each and every day to the point that you're, you can share that with others and you have answers to provide others because you've taken the time to study Scripture because it means the world to you. Now, let me give you another illustration. That was Martin Luther. Have you ever heard of an individual named William Tyndale? Well, William Tyndale was an individual who um, gave his life. You've heard of the, the Tyndale translation. He was also willing to give his life for something that he believed in, Scripture, because he knew also in his time that it was being uh, misinterpreted and misapplied as it was in Luther's day. Now, William Tyndale was placed in prison for his belief, and this is a letter that he wrote in 1535, and I want to share some of it with you. I got this from the firstenglishbible.com. I believe, most excellent sir, in a little bit of speculation on who he was writing to, but he wrote this from prison in 1535, that you are not unacquainted with the decision reached concerning me. On account, I beseech your lordship, even by the Lord Jesus, that if I am to pass the winter here, to urge upon the Lord uh, Commissary, if he will design to send, me, to send me from my goods in his keeping a warmer cap, for I suffer greatly from cold in the head, being troubled by a continual um, cold, which is aggravated in this prison vault, a warmer coat also, for that which I have is very thin, also cloth for repairing my leggings, 
My overcoat is worn out. The shirts also are worn out. He has a woolen shirt of mine. If he will please send it. I, I have also with him a, a um, leggings of heavier cloth for outerwear. He likewise has warmer nightcaps. I also ask for leave to use a lamp in the evening, for it is tiresome to sit alone in the dark. But above all, I beg and entreat your clemency earnestly to intercede with the Lord Commissary that he would design to allow me to use my Hebrew Bible, Hebrew grammar, and Hebrew lexicon, and that I might imply my time with that study. Thus, likewise, you may, may you obtain what you most desire, saving, saving that it further the salvation of your soul. But if before the end of winter a different decision be reached concerning me, I shall be patient and submit to the will of God, to the glory of the grace of Jesus Christ my Lord, whose spirit may ever direct your heart. Amen. W. Tyndale. Think about an individual who was in prison, it's winter time, it's cold, he doesn't have enough clothing to keep him warm, um, he's in a cold, damp, dark cell, he's asking for garments to keep him warm, he's asking for a hat for his head, he's asking for leggings for his legs, and he also has the audacity to ask for his Hebrew Bible, for his lexicon and his dictionary, and, he, and they light that he might study because he gets tiresome sitting in the dark. Why was William Tyndale in the situation that he was in? Because he placed such faith that this was the Word of God, that it meant the world to him, that he was willing to endure whatever he needed to endure in order that God's Word might get out to the common individual. Do you have such faith in the reliability of Scripture that you're willing to allow yourself to endure what might need to endure so that God's Word can go forth to the next generation through you, through your family, through your home, through your job, through your place of employment or school or wherever it, wherever it is you go each day, the, the world that you run into each day, do you have enough trust and belief and the reliability of Scripture that it dictates the decisions that, that you make or the places that you go or the way you spend your money, the, the, the monies that God has blessed you with to be a steward? Do you have that much faith and that much trust in Scripture? Do you faithfully attend church? Or is church just something you do when there's nothing else to do? And, you know, or it's Easter time or it's Palm Sunday or look, it's Christmas time again. Perhaps we should go down to church and, and attend a service and act like we have something. Here's an individual who spent a lot of time in prison because the Bible meant that much to him. Here's, here's uh, Luther who spent a lot of time in prison because the Bible meant that much to him. Here's a man who was willing to have a price on his head to ensure that the text went forward. All right, so I think that's pretty powerful. Those are pretty powerful motives that, are, that exist outside of the text that we can point to from a historical reference, and there's no doubting that individuals like William Tyndale or Martin Luther existed. These men existed beyond the shadow of all doubt. And they lived their life from the standpoint that Scripture means more to me than anything else. And yeah, ultimately, they, they, they paid for it. But who do you think was the better of it? I mean, think about the, the years, the hundreds and hundreds of years since the Tyndales or the Luthers and the example that they left how many, how many men and women have come along hundreds and hundreds of years down through time that have been able to point to Martin Luther or William Tyndale's life and their example and say, I want to follow in their footsteps and I want to live the life that they lived and I want to ensure that God's Word is there for the generation that, that, that will follow me and my family 
and maybe my children and my grandchildren or my nephews and nieces or whatever the case might be, or my church, I want to be sure that God's Word is out there, that it's trustworthy, that it's reliable, and that people know that by how I live my life each and every day. You see, we just happen to be privileged enough, at least for now, to live in a country where we can freely exercise our faith. Why not make use of the time that we've been given? Use these men as our example and move forward to ensure that we let the next generation know that the Bible is trustworthy, that it is reliable, and it is worth giving your life for. I hope you'll take these thoughts and you'll think on them through the coming week. And that next Friday when we get together, we'll pick up with um, lesson three on the reliability of Scripture. Until then, this is Brother Joe saying, dig deep into the truth of God's Word. God bless. Scripture Life Today is a teaching ministry of Joe Lunsford.